and welcome everybody. Welcome to Oz by Drone. I'm Greg and he is Grumpy. I'm not John. Yeah, that's right. I'm not John. <laughs> welcome Grumps. How you doing? I'm doing all right. You know, everything said and done, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, just been chilling this week, you know. Yeah, chilling. And, uh, I hope you're not too cold. No, no, actually, no. It's been the temperatures in our part of the world have been like, uh, let's see, I think we're 93 the other day with 82% humidity. So, yeah, you know, okay. uh, that's why I'm staying inside under the air conditioner and chilling. So maybe dripping a little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely when I go outside I am, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So welcome everyone to Oz by Drone. Today we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to have a look at some news up the front. We've got a guest who's going to be joining us halfway through the news. His name's Chris. He's um, the tow truck guy. He makes videos about tow trucks and um, particularly cars getting towed out of the back lot in his data center. We're going to have a quick look at a little bit of that later and also talk to him about other things because he works in the computer industry and in tech support and all of those kind of things. And I want to have a chat to Chris about how do you provide good customer support to your customers. But we'll get to that later. Right now, as always, it's time for the news. And I didn't have my news button ready. There it is. As always, um, Oz by Drone News is brought to you by Air Data UAV. Is your drone healthy or is it about to surprise you on your next flight? Don't wait to find out. Discover under the hood information and review early signs of problems before you take off again. Use discount code OzbyDrone20 for a 20% discount. There's a link in the description. Have you have you had a look at that yourself, by the way, Grumps? Have you had a look no, at it? Um, no, I haven't looked at it yet. Every week I say I'm going to do it. When I get through with this show, I go in there and I go to sleep and I forget. <laughs> I wake up in there, a new world the next day. There is a free version of Air Data, and um, it does the same as the bigger ones. Everyone here today should go and check it out and try it. It's a really good package to get some data out of your drone flights. So anyway, we'll get on with that a little bit later. Right now, our first news story, Terra Drone has been granted the first commercial beyond visual line of sight permit in Indonesia, making another first for the company. The company is now allowed to fly long distance surveying, surveillance and patrol missions. The Ministry of Transportation of the Republic of Indonesia already has drone rules in place prohibiting pilots flying drones up to 25 kilos over crowds and all of the usual kind of things. This new permit for Terra Drone will allow the company to fly its drones in a special category with its own special set of rules and regulations. And this is interesting because we've got John Morrison, obviously our regular co-host, who um, himself has recently got beyond visual line of sight approval in Australia. But it's also in Canada, a drone company in Canada has also been granted a one-year permit for beyond visual line of sight flights. Transport Canada is allowing in-flight data to use drones um, by day or by night anywhere in Canada providing the risk to public safety is low. I don't know how they're going to certify that, but two countries where we're finally getting beyond visual line of sight flights permitted by the regulators. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm like you. How are they going to prove it? Uh, I guess if you go so many days, weeks, or years without a crash, dropping a drone on somebody's head, I guess they consider that safe. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you have a look. How many people do you know who fly beyond visual line of sight? Not that you encourage someone to break the law, but every day of the week, yeah, within, does. A, within yeah. 10 square kilometers from where you live, guaranteed right now there is someone flying beyond visual line of sight. Um, oh, yeah. 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 So, look, Mine interesting to... For me, and I can't see it, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's beyond visual line of binoculars for you. Um, <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> Our second story, trans, uh, third story, let's go down there. I've got out of order. Transport Canada again um, has, um, in the next story, they've approved Fixar's revolutionary drone design for flights in Canada, meaning Fixar can start flying missions in controlled airspace and near people. So this is the particular drone that was probably referred to in the previous story. It uses a fixed angle rotor system, meaning fewer moving parts or potential points of failure. Well, it makes sense. The I mean, is different. Designed with purpose, ingenuity, and above all, 
a 360 degree understanding of industry requirements. This is FIXAR, which stands for Fixed Angle Rotors. This patented feature allows our aircraft to take off and hover like a helicopter, then smoothly transition to fly like a plane. That means increased efficiency, range, and payload capacity. The fixed angled rotors make transition from vertical to forward flight a breeze and allow Fixar to avoid the cumbersome requirements that plague many VTOL designs. Learning to program and fly this autonomous robot is a snap. The UAV can be assembled in under three minutes and is as simple to operate so as I a won't, standard um, quadcopter. I won't play the whole thing, but I just wanted people to have a look at that. It's a really interesting design for their aircraft. I mean, people have seen the, the rotation previously of the rotors itself, but is that rotating the frame, I think, is what's happening there? Well, I, I think because it says fixed angle, I think it's just the angle of of the props and which way they're, you know, because you got the two forward ones are at an angle like this, which means they can they they can pull and the two back ones are angled in the same direction, but they're, uh, you can't see, they can't see me on here because I'm watching. Anyways, they, they're reversed of that. And uh, the wings are sort of in between the two angles, which makes it, uh, looks like it makes it more efficient in flying, you know, because they can, they can cut the power a little bit on it because it's going to have uh, the lift on the wings. And then okay. once they get to a position, they can hover. Yeah. Look, it looks interesting nonetheless and something to keep an eye on. But have a look at that frame in the middle there. It, it seems to me that the frame may be rotating a little bit on the wing and on the main fuselage as well, where the props are attached to the frame. I think that's what they're doing. They're not changing the angle of attack of the, the props and the engines, but rather the frame on which they're mounted. I think that's what they're doing. Yeah, I'd have to look at it again. Yeah. <coughs> But, Look, yeah. interesting and something to keep an eye on. And as we move into our next one today. Now, this one is definitely interesting. In um, Washington or the States, who regulates how and where drones operate? The FAA is authorized to oversee navigable airspace. But what about property rights? How low is too low? Brent Scorup is a senior research fellow at the Mercata Center in George Mason University. And he has a look at this topic. There's a debate brewing in aviation policy. Can states and cities regulate low altitude drone flights and demarcate commercial drone highways? Or are drone routes more like commercial aviation, a federal matter? It's a pressing issue. Commercial drone operators are testing services like agriculture spraying, utility and rail inspections, and medical supplies deliveries. This technology is improving rapidly. A Chinese logistics company responding to the COVID-19 crisis reportedly made several tons worth of medical and emergency deliveries via drone in recent weeks. Closer to home, investors are funding drone startups with hopes of capturing some of the U.S. home medical delivery markets, which are worth tens of billions of dollars. But it's unclear how federal and state laws will interact in the low altitude airspace that drones fly in, 200 feet or so above the ground. On the one hand, the Federal Aviation Administration is authorized by Congress to regulate navigable airspace in the U.S. Many aviation experts believe, therefore, that drones extend the FAA's powers all the way down to the tips of the grass in backyards, private woodlands, and farm fields across the country. So where does navigable airspace end and state authority begin? Court decisions are ambiguous, but earlier aviation cases made two things clear. Landowners and states can't prevent flights at high altitudes, but at low altitudes, aviation yields to property rights. Reggie Govan, a former FAA chief counsel, recently noted that drone services will test established aviation doctrines. U.S. v. Cosby, a 1946 Supreme Court decision, is an important case in this legal area. In the 1940s, military planes were flying at low altitude over North Carolina farmland near an airport. Mr. Cosby, a farmer, sued, alleging an uncompensated takings because the low flights made his home unlivable and the constant noise killed his chickens. The court in U.S. v. Cosby so ruled out the ancient legal principle that we'll landowners... We'll pause the video there and come back to you and I, Lloyd. Agreed with Cosby that low okay. Flights could be an um, what do you think? Where does navigable airspace end? Well, I mean, as the FAA 
has it right now it's you know it, it ends on you know they're anything above the top of your foot really and you know it's once you're off the ground that's considered navigable airspace that they have the authority but to listen to that uh 1946 case uh you know that may bring they may be using something like that that's really old but if the precedence is there that's what the lawyers are going to use and they're going to argue that and we've so let seen me give that. you an example let me give you an example if you've got um i don't know a 20 foot wall around your property but no ceiling and someone flies a drone are they allowed to descend below the top of the wall well there there you go i would say no but the way the faa sees it right at the moment <clears throat> yes so it's going to be between this is now there are privacy rights that we have here in the states you know just like you do in australia mm -hmm. so that that's you know it's like he says the courts right now are ambiguous about it they're yeah i do know that word uh anyways but <laughs> <laughs> they they uh uh it's going to have to be played out in court i think it's going to come down between the two of them and anybody saw ken's guest last night she was talking about all these rules are making it into a charlie foxtrot okay nice yes way. well yes <laughs> we're not going to have that phrase on here that, that yeah, was on there no. but... yeah a charlie foxtrot but... and that's what's coming up you know with all these everybody's making up their own rules cities counties state I mean, they're doing look look at how they're doing it with the covid stuff i mean even they can't figure out who all can't figure out who can wear a mask who can't who shouldn't who should you know blah 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 what are they going to do about drones? They have less clue about it than they do about COVID. And that's not very much, to be honest. Yeah. Here's, here's my opinion. This is just me. But if you've got a tree or a building or a whatever, drones should not be able to descend below a building, you know, within a certain radius around that. That's what I think is a reasonable interpretation of navigable airspace because you can't navigate around a building you're going to crash into it so right i don't know what that radius is around all of those obstacles should be but let's use the you know um 400 feet rule 400 feet around an obstacle is um not uh faa controlled airspace if it's private property maybe that is the answer but then it brings the question and you know there are people who say they want to go and fly um, up next to a big tall building and they go and take off and they're on some property, who gets to control their ascent when they're taking off from the ground? It's just, it, it's going to be an interesting one to look at. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as a, uh, uh, if you're wondering what that white bar is, that's supposed to be, we got a super chat from Metro Drones. There we go. Metro if Drones, thank you for that. Thanks for the super chat, <laughs> 10 bucks. Happy Friday, Droners, Greg Lloyd, howdy. Thanks, Metro. Yeah, appreciate, really appreciate that. Yeah, it's it's like I said, it's it's going to be decided in the courts and until they, we don't, right now, as a, a hobbyist like myself, I can't fly above 400 feet, period, into conversation. I can't go up next to a building and fly 400 feet above it like uh, part 107 guys can. You know, they mm -hmm. changed that rule for the uh, hobbyist. So, okay. Look, it'll be interesting to see where it goes, but let's move on. We've got two more quick stories before we get into our guest. And the first one of those is about China. Secret drone footage and undercover video has exposed the terrifying scale of a Chinese cover up over its oppression of the country's, and I don't know if I'm saying this right, Uyghur community. Um, have you heard of the Uyghur community, Lloyd? Is no, that something you're familiar no. with? No, I'm not. So it's a but community of people. That. It's a, a community of people which um, are largely Muslim-believing people. Um, they are, I think there was some connection to different surrounding countries, and they're, they're kind of what I would describe as the the Muslim equivalent of the Jewish community. They don't have a specific homeland that they can call this is our land and they ended up in uh, a number of places one of which is within china's control and here you can see the people with um, zip ties around their hands 
um, blindfolds on their heads, and we're talking about hundreds of people um, with two Chinese armed guards per person, and they're being led onto trains. Now, there's been some speculation in the media that this is to go and literally to force them to go and make, believe it or not, of all things, masks in a labor camp. And on that um, clip, on that photo that you just saw there for a second ago, let's put that photo back up. Um, this is something that appeared on, um, I believe it was BBC television. There was an interview with the local ambassador in, in the UK talking about this video, talking about this topic. And I do encourage you to go and check it out and search um, through some of the links that we've got in the description for our video today. Go and have a look at it because it's, um, it's atrocious what's happening. I don't know that we can do anything about it, but we certainly see that um, there's a lot of movement in recent times from, uh, from the US and Australia and other countries in terms of that interface with China. You hadn't heard about this one? Grumps? I hadn't heard it. No, I hadn't. I hadn't heard about this one. Uh, I after you started talking about it, I'm kind of I I heard a little bit about the the group of people, the Uyghur or whatever they're called. But yeah, uh, I, but it's one of those things that kind of uh, went over my head on that one. I just missed it, you know. And uh, but, yeah, yeah, China. You know, I mean. What can you do with China? I mean, you know, they're they're a totalitarian communist government that is going to do what they deem right for their government, and uh, you know, they're going. They've been using. I mean, you go all the way back to what Mao did, and and uh, the 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 cultural uh, eradication that they did there. You know, the religious yeah. eradication. This is just another another sign of what China's really like and thinking well, we can be friends and shake hands and sit around and keep sing Kumbaya with them. Nah, I don't think so. Mm. I don't know what the answer is, but um, it's certainly an atrocity. And the fact that drone technology is being used to identify and capture this, I, I honestly wish safety to the person who took that footage, because if it was taken on a Chinese manufactured drone, you can be sure that the Chinese government is going back and asking for information from DJI and the other Chinese manufacturers of information of what's the serial number of the aircraft that flew from this location on this date. They're yeah. definitely going back and doing that. And I definitely wish safety um, to those people. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it, it takes a lot for a person to be able to, to do that, for them to have the guts to do that because they know they might be in one of those trains later on you know and mm. uh yeah so i hope they're i hope they're safe or they're staying safe or you know maybe we need to maybe they got some throwaway drones you know <laughs> disposable like yeah. cell phones yeah disposable drones like disposable phones you know yeah okay one more quick story before we go to our guest and this one flying pictures has introduced cinematography's most powerful drone called ultra the heavy lift drone is capable of a maximum payload of 60 kilograms and a maximum takeoff mass of 110 kilos. The Ultra is dedicated to high-end cinematography applications and can be used as a valid alternative to a helicopter. Now, if I was Ken Heron right about now, I'd be going, oh, oh, big drone. Yeah, I'm just I'm imagining. Thinking, yeah, um, that's, uh, you know, I think I saw, see, that's a 3D setup right there. I mean, I, you know, I didn't know they were still doing 3D, but apparently they are. Mm. Uh, but, oh, my God, that's just an unbelievable camera system, you know. Absolutely. And, my uh, wife is into photography, and she's looking at it with longing eyes as well. Baby, would you like another drone? <laughs> that one she'd probably let you have. Uh, I don't know. I think that's going to have a price tag that's uh, quite significant. Yeah, probably about $150,000. <laughs> yeah, maybe not that much. 
Yeah. I don't know though. Those cameras like that because that's a that's a cinematography camera. That's not uh, at least that one Absolutely. was. Absolutely. You know, it was it was what this is what they're using now uh, because you see it all the time if you watch any of the new shows on television. You see these shots. You can look at them and say, "Yeah, that was done with a drone." And the movies to get those same shots, they used to have to use the boom and all that. This is what they're using now. You know, this is mm. this is. Uh, that's an amazing piece of equipment. I don't know why they're out in the middle of a farm field, though, but, you know, whatever. Well, they're just probably because their initial flights, they wanted to test it in a place that it, if something went wrong, that it wasn't going to cause problems. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that is amazing. But anyway, we'll leave that one there. And um, as always, we don't um, necessarily show the full video of everything we do each week here but there are links to all of the information in the description for our main video. So do check those out. And now it's time without further ado to say hello to our special guest, Chris Gerber. I'm a special guest. You're a I'm, special, I'm a special guest. guest. Do You're I, a special guest. You're a mate. Do I get, do I get theme music? Do I get my walk on music or anything? Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I got to do see. everything. What? Hang on, hang on, hang on. If, if you want something like that, we'll come over here and hang on. I know you got something in mind. Oh, yeah, he's got something uh, there. I hope so. Yeah, look, a I short hope I know notice, what it is. you don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, you want that music. <laughs> I mean, I mean so it's whatever you like. Well, good day. Okay. G'day, Chris. Um, I tell you what. To my producer, um, can mm -hmm. you play the um, the the video clip just so that we can have that music? Ah, full intro. So this is actually one of Chris's recent videos that he's had on his channel, and just to share, he does videos about a car park lot. How about that? Who would have guessed? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I so never Chris, would have thought is, that was a thing. Yeah, I know. So, Chris, this is something that you've done outside of a building where you've got a business that does computer stuff. Right. right. So what is your normal business, first of all? Okay, well, so we run a uh, enterprise data center. Uh, and basically all it is, it's a very boring building full of computer servers, uh, internet connections, air conditioners, and a bunch of backup batteries. And okay. the idea is uh, all of the equipment in there, that's the stuff where your, uh, your VoIP phone might go or your website is hosted or your videos are getting served, whatever the case may be, probably work, a lot of work stuff. Uh, it's got to be online all the time. Uh, there, there is no excuse for downtime. So you have to put it in a facility like that my job is to run that facility. And of course, you've got to keep the facility secure and make sure that it's fully accessible at all times. And therefore, you might have surveillance cameras in you your go. parking lot. There you go. That's the whole reason. I think we've got uh, 60 plus cameras uh, around the building. So we have fairly good coverage inside and out. Um, and obviously, the, can the whole I just purpose pause? of the... Yeah, go ahead. Can I, you, can you, I just you, pause you, there? What 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 what's this? Uh, you know that we we call that Thursday in Deep Ellum. That's <laughs> that's, that's kind of how it happens. You've got a so, tinkle timer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we got the tinkle timer, and if you know if you know the channel, um, if you're going to tinkle in the parking lot, then you, we're going to time you. And we're <laughs> we're really we're really going for. Uh, Quality Length content of time, yeah. Well, that too, but we're you know, we really want to emphasize the amount of time and not necessarily the length of the stream. That's not what we're going for. <laughs> okay, have you have you have you investigated getting um chemical test kits that you can go and swab and find out the composition? That's going too I, far, maybe. <laughs> I, I, I'm really frightened to try that. I don't think anybody wants that. That's like, you know, you, you don't want to go into a hotel room and turn on the black light. You just, you're better off not knowing. So long story short, 
you've got your tinkle timers and can we scrub that clip forward a little bit? Can we fast forward that and look for some action? I'll just this get my action. producer. <laughs> well, there's action there. Keep going, keep going. A bit more. More tinkle uh, timer. No. Ah, but we, oh, toe now we're timer. on the toe timer. Yep. Yeah, so, so sometimes we throw the toe timer in. How long it takes to get it out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. From the time that the tow truck shows up uh, to the time the tow truck has the car on the hook and is out of there, uh, we can time that. And you'd be amazed at how fast these guys can work. And keep in mind, I mean, this is including him getting out to take pictures to, you know, in sort of a CYA uh, aspect to make sure that nobody tries to get on his case for damage. Uh, yeah. You know, so he's, this... he's got to do all of that. He's got to do all the, the hooking up. Uh, and then he's out of there. Usually this music about a minute. that you can this music that you can hear in the background and apologies, Chris, you can't hear it probably. Can you hear right. the music? I no? can't. No, no, that's a Wirecast bug, but we'll come back to that in a little bit <laughs> in a moment. Uh, why Wirecast has a bug? <laughs> okay, so the music that everyone else can hear, Chris has got hashtag drum beats and this is his thing, right? So that song has become quite famous. Yeah, that's, the, that's that's officially known as the drumbeat song at this point. Although it does have a name. It's called The Hero Steps Up, and it's by a artist named Dougie Wood. And you found that in the YouTube sound library, and it's uh, yeah, become it's very YouTube famous. Yeah, it's in the YouTube audio library. You have you ever corresponded with him at all? I have. I yeah. have. Yeah. And what so, did he say? Uh, <laughs> he thought it was pretty thrilling that his, uh, that his music was being used for that. He'd done that piece a number of years ago um, yeah. and he did a whole a whole little grouping of music that's all in the uh, audio library now over at YouTube uh, so he was he was kind of tickled that we were using it and it had become a thing he never had any uh, didn't have any, any idea. of his tunes yeah 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 so what happens the future revealed in three two one silver door indicating the car's previous color Boy, I don't even know when this video was anymore. This was your most recent video that actually had a tow truck in it, because obviously there's oh, not so much towing at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's been uh, it's been completely shut down. Okay. Look, we'll leave the tow truck there. We'll leave that video there and come back to you in the studio. That's a hint to my producer. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna kill that music. <laughs> Look, Fantastic. you must have a lot of fun with that. I do. I, I, I genuinely, genuinely enjoy putting the videos together. Um, even more than that, I like watching the comment section. So at this point, I'm just I'm putting stuff together, and who knows what I'm doing. Uh, and every time I think, okay, this is a step too far, they're they're gonna they're gonna revolt, they're gonna hate this. Something happens. They uh, they tend to enjoy it. So I just keep pushing the boundaries a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. So from tinkle timers and tow trucks, mm. we go to technical support. Mm. So that's what you do in your data center. You're, that's, you're yeah, supporting. That's, my, that's my real job. Yeah. Okay. And when you're providing tech support to your customers, what do you define as good support? Good support is trying to understand where the customer is coming from and ultimately try to get that issue resolved. That's as simple as it can be. Okay. Now, I, I ask this question from the perspective of me as a Telestream Wirecast user, and um, it's no secret to my regular viewers that I've had some frustration. And, <laughs> and I wanted to speak to you today, Chris. You've used Wirecast mm. as well. Sure. But I wanted to ask you from the perspective of providing customer support your opinion on a situation. Oh, boy. So... So I've, I've submitted a large number of bugs to Wirecast. They're, they're problems where the product doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Mm. And, and recently, um, within the last week, I got a letter from Wirecast where supposedly, oh, we've just gone off the air. Oh, Let's no. see if we can get back on. That would be so funny if they'd killed it. <gasps> Conspiracy.
Beach no. bowling. Oh. Well, Hang we're on. online. Try it now. Try it now. There we go. Okay. Did it come back? It's back. I believe we're back on air. This is so... Is it back? This, we're back. <laughs> the timing of this is just unbelievable. <laughs> I wanted to talk about Wirecast and my support woes, and all of a sudden it crashes and freezes. Yeah, you're really pushing it, it now. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, let me, let me get back to my story, and I want to get your um, reaction to it. Um, submitted a large number of bugs, been going back and forth. Some of them are two or three years old and no update, no information, no feedback as to when or if these things will be fixed. Mm -hmm. So at, at a point you reach some frustration and every time I see someone else talking about the same bug in their forums, I say, oh, here's when I first reported this bug and here's the link to my post. I've had no update as to when or if it's going to be fixed. Doing it in a respectful manner, but highlighting my support frustration. And as a result of some of this, Telestream has sent me a letter saying that they don't want to support me as a customer anymore. Wow. Uh, it's, it's surprising, but then again, it's not at all. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, think we've seen multiple cases where companies respond in this manner. Um, and look, let's be honest, nobody likes being called on the carpet. Nobody likes being called out for their failings, uh, perceived or real. Um, and, you know, the, the notion of rubbing somebody's nose in it, um, it probably doesn't win a lot of friends at the company. But it doesn't sound to me like that's what you're doing. Uh, rather, you've really sort of been almost an ambassador uh, and an unofficial evangelist. Uh, for Wirecast. So for them to go about that in that manner is uh, surprising. So here's an interesting statistic. I had a look on their support forum. Their official moderator has a certain number of posts that he's had on the forum and 7% of them have got thumbs up or likes. Of all of my posts, I've got 18% of my posts <laughs> with a thumbs up or a like. Yeah, I'm doing sounds... twice as good as their own support staff and it's it's really disappointing. Sounds like they should hire you. You know, way back when um, I actually said to them, uh, if you want me to come on board, I'll go and work for you for three months free of charge and try and fix this stuff up and make it work better. Um, mm. And if you like me, go and hire me. Um, but they, um, they weren't interested. And to um, answer your question, Agent K, yes, Wirecast fired me as a customer. Speaking of which, the screen that you're looking at right now was frozen due to a bug in Wirecast. Um, it was already cleared on here. It was already finished on here, but there's the second bug of Wirecast today. Chris can't hear the audio. Grumpy can't hear the audio whenever I fade it, just that one little notch. But yep. the reason that they give for all of this is all of the things that I'm doing apparently are not normal use cases and no one else have has these problems. Nobody. I'm, Nobody. So wow. Ken Heron. So Ken Heron doesn't have problems with Wirecast on a regular basis. Good to hear. Um, um, <clears throat> yeah. Jens Jack doesn't have problems. Um, Ready Set Drone doesn't have problems. I mean, he's just changed to a new platform that we saw today. And Matthew Potter, he doesn't have problems. It's just me. Boy, did they? Uh, you... Did we freeze up again? No, yeah, we're still we, going we... as far as I can see. Really? We're still going at the moment. Yeah. Oh, I've got a uh, I've got a rotating spiral on mine. Uh, just refresh it, but I, we're still going out to YouTube, as best okay. I can tell. But Chris, let me ask you: um, you use Wirecast, don't you? I, I remember you telling me that you use it for. Um, for yeah, some absolutely. Stuff. We've we've absolutely used Wirecast in the past. Uh, and I it's buffering back and forth. It's. Uh, I just refresh, Greg, and I'm getting the same thing. It's a spinning circle, and it stops for a second and spins again. Uh, it looks like we're back up here. Boy, well, yeah, they're, they're really having trouble with this. Yeah. I'm going to have you to know, speak to the guy from the data center who's got my um, RTMP proxy. <laughs> if, on, if only you knew that guy. Yeah. Let's see. Um, 
Uh, I can log in, check some stuff here. Okay. See, that's good tech support. But back to the back to the question. You said you used to use Wirecast. You don't anymore. Right. Right. No, we uh, we've abandoned Wirecast uh, in favor of another product, uh, which suits our needs a little we, bit better. We won't mention the other product. I'm not here to sure. go and hurt Wirecast. But I sure look. Yeah. I honestly, I've got the opinion, and this is my opinion. Wirecast, as far as the potential is the best product on the market. I look at it and the user interface, the way they've got their layering and all of their configuration, I, I love that. But the other things, the bugs, the things that don't work, mm. the things that get reported and don't get fixed, that's what annoys me. And unfortunately, if I look at the other products, I'm, I'm not necessarily happier with them. Greg, can you speak slower so every time it locks up, you will still speak in complete sentences? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, good Thunderbird. News, Greg. Uh... <laughs> Greg, I got good news for you. Tidler's working for a change. Yeah, Tidler Live <laughs> is the other product. It's working, but like, like I said before, it's freezing on the screen every now and again, so that's yeah. a little bit of frustration. Goodness. Look, um, I don't want to bore you any further, but let me let me ask you this: How would you fix it if you were if you were a company that's a software development company? Um, what would you do differently? And I haven't prepped you with this question or anything, have I? No, no. This is the, you're you're kind of putting me on the spot here. Thanks, pal. Um, <laughs> no, so uh, golly, what do you what do you do? Are you just if you're a manager there or if you're running the operation, you just try to be as understanding about the customer needs as possible. Uh, really try to get inside the head of the user uh, and understand what's going on. Uh, I've worked with a lot of techs and I've worked with a lot of technical groups before. And sometimes there's the tendency uh, to sort of run off in the direction and say, well, it must be user error. They're doing something that uh, is different, and that's not the way that 90% of our users are going to use it. So we're just not going to worry about them, and they're a bad apple. Mm. Um, so here's, I'm, here, here, I'm not sure if that's the appropriate response. Yeah. I, I've got something for me, and here's, here's my kind of thinking. When I've worked in the IT industry, um, start less and finish more. So when you're when you're doing software development, if you say I'm going to fix these particular things and mm -hmm. not focus on all of this other stuff and actually mm. say no to someone, if you want to tell your user base or your customer base no, this is an unsupported feature, then do that. But the sure, problem absolutely. is the problem is when you've got people that you've got three year old bugs and problems that you've reported or that that your customers have reported mm -hmm. to you. They have an expectation, and it's a radical expectation that when you report a bug, that it gets fixed, or or at least acknowledged. And, or, and it sounds to me like you're you're not getting the acknowledgement. Yeah. So anyway, look, here's what I want to do. I want to think about how does this get fixed, and I'm going to propose something radical to to my viewers. I'm going to ask everyone who's watching here today, even if you're not currently a YouTuber, go and download a copy of Wirecast and ch check it out yourself. Play with it. Go and see if you think it works well or if it doesn't work well, um, whatever it is. And if you think it works well, then tell me. If you think it doesn't work well, then go and tell them post in their forums or whatever. But I'm, I'm saying this from the perspective not of trying to hurt or hinder Wirecast. I honestly wish that they would be successful because I love the platform. I honestly do. And Grumpy, you've purchased a copy of this yourself. You've got a copy of Wirecast as well. Yes. Yeah. And I haven't used it uh, to broadcast with. I, I'm using it right now for, for being on your show, but that's strictly as... Uh, I use the I use the other uh, big <laughs> program out there. We won't mention the name. We're not here to hurt someone. But you're using no, something else because because uh, it is uh, stable, here. you know. And I started with it. One is familiarity. You know, I'm familiar with the product <clears> because I've been using it for I don't know two or three years now. And two, uh, 
it's so much more stable. Uh, it does. There's a there, for example, and I, I brought it up here the other day with them. I asked for a particular feature that this other software has. And everybody who watches my channel knows what it is. So, uh, and I asked, and of course I went through this whole rigmarole. I had to record and show them exactly what I wanted it to do using the other software, screen record it or screen capture it. Then I sent it to them, showed them, oh yeah, well, we're, we'll, we'll be working on that. That was over a year ago. And I asked him the other day, what, you know, what's the news? You said something would be coming forward, how, where we stand on that. And their answer was, well, can you give us that ticket number from the original situation and we'll look into it? And that's, that's a year ago. I, ha I don't remember what that ticket number was. I've probably turned in three or four since then. So, you know, uh, <laughs> that's why I use the other product. Oops. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with Macintosh uh yeah. computers yeah look the other product i would use it if it worked with mac um i've started to have a look at a few other products as well but here's the challenge for me i've already invested so much in my workflow my beginning to end kind of stuff i've got down here sure. and let me see if i can don't break it i've don't got break a, it i've got a control surface that i use over here that um I only purchased because it was advertised as being compatible with Wirecast. So I've spent that extra money and mm -hmm. I can go and change shots from over here, even though my wife is my regular producer. Um, how do I do this? Here, there, there we've got side B. So we've been trying to get help with Wirecast that need Greg's help. So that's side B. That's He's having trouble as well. It's just frustrating. Anyway. I, I'm not here to I'm not here to rant, but I, I I needed to let some of it out. So again, here's my ask of everyone. Go out, get a copy of Wirecast, test it out yourself. And if you want help, tell me. I've actually created a new website, wirecast.community. Which has got a forum in it and uh it's community support because the Telestream people, I'm not allowed to post on their official forum anymore. Have um, you been banned? I've been banned from their forum. Wow. Every post that I have gets put into uh, a moderation queue and is manually approved mm -hmm. in case I say that this bug was reported two years ago. They don't want people to know about that. I just want to quickly pause for one second. There was a message on the screen. This is, can you put that back up again, um, Grumps, the Elliot thing? Oh, yeah. Let me find it. Um, oh, yeah, it we've got a GoFundMe for um, Elliot and Nick's family. Nick, high tech redneck, is one of our regulars, and I don't know if he's in the chat today, but have a look at that link and do support them. Um, Elliot is three years old, I believe, and had a heart transplant, yep. and um, he, he, did okay getting out of that, but he's recently had an infection and uh, had to have some additional stuff and he's in hospital again. So if anyone wants to chip in a few bucks to help them out, I'm sure Nick and Elliot would very much appreciate that. Sorry for the interruption. I just saw you put the thing on the screen and I wanted to get that out. Okay. Now, now that I've had my... Uh, Do you feel better? Job, Do you feel a I've, sense of catharsis? Is a weight off your shoulders? Oh, look, I don't know what I feel. It's just frustrating that a company would do that in the first place. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, Agent K yeah. says, welcome to Wirecrash. I mean, the reality is there's multiple channels that are all having this problem, and I just happen to tell them about it repeatedly. That's my mistake. Sure. sure. Well, anyway, and, you let's, know, I'll, let's... I'll, be, I'll be quite honest with you. We, we've run into a similar situation. Um, I don't think it's any secret. Uh, we do a lot of Sunday morning streaming because that's where I volunteer uh, at the church. Uh, we've certainly run into our issues with uh, a whole host of streaming platform providers. Uh, so whether that's the software or the uh, the provider that uh, takes that stream and broadcasts that out to the various other streams, uh, mm. it's been a real challenge. And I'll tell you, 
these past few months uh, with all the virus that's going on, since everybody's been shut down, uh, we've been streaming for years and years, but there are a lot of new streamers. So there's yeah. there are a lot of new people getting into this right now yeah. as well. And I think we're probably going to be uh, on the precipice of something really interesting. Because I feel like there are those of us who have been in the game, we've been in the industry, uh, and we kind of know what to expect and the bugs that we put up with and, and kind of some of the stuff that isn't perfect, but we know it's not perfect and we deal with it. And I think as we get this whole new push of people, their expectations are pretty high because mm. what they see, uh, you know, what they're accustomed to seeing on TV or a well-produced webcast, uh, you know, they're... They just expect it to be smooth, and they expect it to be easy to put together. So yeah. I'll be really interested to see what happens uh, as a result of that. Yeah, yeah. There's I'm just a lot reading, of work that goes into this. I'm just reading from Daryl um, Lirad. Hard to watch later. By is the quality of the video currently that bad? It was blurry a few minutes ago i refreshed and it looks like everything's running good right now but it was kind of blurry looks like and, it comes and goes yeah it's okay look um for this particular week i'll upload a copy of the broadcast afterwards um so people can have a look at that later um okay let's change it up and mix it up now it's time to do something a little bit more interesting um i don't want to be so negative and talking about Wirecast all the time, but now it's time to... Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to play Stack the Gang. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's that time of the week that we love and our guests hate. We're going to go and make fun of our guests because we're going to find out what they know about Australia. It's time for... Stump the Yank. Okay, Already. We'll fade that out. So okay. we've got in the background Chris and we've got Grumps. Grumps going and having a look up his questions. And I did challenge him. I don't know if he's been successful. We'll find out in a minute. I said, Chris, uh, I said, find out something Aussie about tow trucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was a little more difficult. But I, I did find some things that with a stretch of your imagination could be considered Aussie tow truck related. Okay. So, so, uh, let me see if I can go one. Uh, let me see. Well, you know, let me, let's start at the top. Is it can't, can't go whenever you're ready, Lloyd. Yeah. I, I am. Okay. <laughs> can you tell me is, uh, this and this is related into maybe a car that was towed, or it could be a, a truck, or it could be related to video because you are into video and streaming and all that. So, what does V dub mean? Oh, VW Volkswagen. Oh my god, I shouldn't have picked that, that one. one. Yeah, because my wife got it, and if she got it, anybody could have got it. <laughs> I hope she's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how she's gonna feel about that. <laughs> yes, she's gonna tell me what she's gonna do. <laughs> I, I got a uh, sofa right over here, and uh, you, you're it. welcome to yeah, it. Yeah, you're not that far of a drive. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I hope she didn't see this. Anyways, okay, let's, okay, let's, I've got one. I've got one. Let's put me on the screen, go. There and you go. I'm going to give a car question. This one is an advertising song, and you've got to tell me the brand name. Meat pies, kangaroos. Actually, the first word, football, football, meat pies, kangaroo, and what cars? Holden. You, you Googled. I didn't. No, I was you watching. You really didn't. He did <laughs> no, no, he did not Google it. I've been sitting here watching him in full screen, and he was looking up this what's, direction. Like, what's what, what's more Australian than a Holden? Holden, exactly. Okay, yeah. so he's a car guy. It's not fair. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that was the other thing, right? You know, GTO. Or, I mean, you come no. on, you watch it. Yeah, yeah. That was the other reason I picked car ones. Let's now you're in my wheelhouse right now. This is this is okay. 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 All right. Yeah. 
You got one uh, more grumps? Yeah. Now, if I say, you know, it's a porker, am I talking about some lady that's a little overweight? Is it about, say, a, a pork sandwich or it's about a car? And what is that car if it is a car? If it's not, what is the others? Okay. <laughs> there's, no there's, there. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a lot to unwrap in this one. <laughs> You're going to get my stream demonetized, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, number one, what what is a porker? If it is a car, what kind of car? It's a police car. Nope. Oh. You can see how I went there, though. Yeah, I, I okay. can. <laughs> uh, boy, I'm going to say it's a car. It's a um, it's a Jeep. Nope, nope. It's it's actually a Porsche. Porker, got it. Okay. Because they All say right. Porsche, whereas we say Porsche. So Porsche, yeah. Porker, you know. Gotcha. Mm. Okay, well, I, I was never going to get that one. <laughs> That's what I was hoping. I confused you. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Well done. So, uh, so, okay. I'm, so I'm one for two. Yeah. Okay. okay. Last one. Have you got any more? Or is that it? Uh, Come on, Grumps. Give me two for three. Yeah. I need, it. I need this. Big money. Okay. Big money. What are we playing for it, again? Just for luck. Reputation. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Reputation, yeah. Uh, oh. All right. When in reference to cars mm. or ships – or you know zeppelins and we talk about anchors yes now this is an aussie term okay anchors what are anchors in reference to you pick the one of the three you want and obviously it's going to be car related probably okay but so it's multiple anchors? choice yeah i just threw those in there to confuse you but yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> remember everything's been car related so anchor. what was the what was the, what what is an anchor, anchor? yeah <laughs> in a minute. Are those your bagpipes? Okay. That's his ringtone. Yes, they were. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Right. Everybody, just take a moment. Lloyd, Lloyd, he'll be right back. He's <clears throat> he's a little busy right now. Uh, I don't know. You're you're asking what what is an anchor? Uh, By the way, could I, just, could I just could yeah. I just interject? Uh, for, for Lloyd's benefit, your live stream is important to us. Please hold. We'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it was my son calling, so I needed to kind of take uh, it. Yeah, those uh, bagpipes are loud. <laughs> That's the only thing I can hear. It's the only ringtone I could find that I could actually hear. And I happen to like Scotland the Brave, so, you know. Hmm. So, so, Greg, do you know the answer to the question? You know, you, I've forgotten you know the question about? after all that. What was the question? It's something about again. anchors and cars. Anchors. Okay. Anchors. anchors. Yeah. Anchors. What are anchors uh, in the context of cars? Yeah. Brakes. Well, crap. He got three out of three out of four. He <laughs> okay. All, All right. right. Okay. Well <clears throat> Look, we've had a bit of fun with that. We're going to move on and get to our last news stories. And Chris, thank you for being with us. If you've got yeah, some time, stick in the background because there's something that you need to have a few jokes ready for at the end. Okay. All right, I'm okay. ready. Get I'm going to try and be as quick as I can with these. We'll get through them. So back to you, Lloyd. And number one, we've got some illegal drone stuff. From 2009 to 2011, Usama Hamadi conspired to export drone components to a foreign terrorist organization. Now, this video is just something that was put together from one of the news channels. Um, <coughs> Pardon me. Um, but it's interesting. So some of the components that they're exporting were um, IMUs, inertial measurement units, digital compasses, piston engines, um, recording binoculars and jet engines. And they did all of these things without the proper licenses. On July 20, a Minnesota judge sentenced him to 42 months in prison. So interesting to see that there is actually that level of tracking on uh, on these things. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I mean, you know, that's the thing. We we don't want people here in the United States sent into. Just going to pause. You know. There we go. We've just clicked the off and on button because we were buffering again. Oh, we're having okay. one of those days. One of those days. Yeah, I think Wirecast is doing it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let me be fair and reasonable. This is not Wirecast. This is something in the internet somewhere, and I'm not going to blame them when it's not their fault. But let's go on to our next story instead. So our next story, we're going to go and move on. Drone swarms frequently fly outside for a reason. It's difficult for robotic flyers to navigate in tight spaces without hitting each other. Caltech researchers may have a way for those drones to fly indoors. They've developed a machine learning algorithm, Global to Local Safe Autonomy Synthesis, it's called, or GLASS. And this lets drone swarms navigate crowded, unmapped environments. The system works by giving each drone a degree of independence that lets it adapt to a changing environment. Instead of relying on existing maps or routes of every other drone in the swarm, the system has each machine learning how to navigate a given space on its own, even as it coordinates with others. So this decentralized model uh, both helps the drones to improvise and make scaling the swarm easier. Um, so if we have a look at some of these clips there, there was one bit. I Just let me see. Where are we up to? There we go. A couple of drones in there. There's one part of this clip where we see there's two drones there, this one here. Have a look at this one. So the drone at the bottom is pushing down as the drone on the top, it's um, prop wash goes and hits it. But they've got done some stuff so that it can actually know where the other drone is, predict that, anticipate that and counteract that to try and fly in a more stable manner with those other drones around. And again, the same kind of thing. This is without the, the correction first. And you can see how far it dips down. And then with the correction, it still dips down a little bit, but yeah, certainly but it's less pronounced. Each time it does it, it gets a little. What bothers me, they said they use a neural network. Well, that's what they're referring to, to our human brain. This is starting to sound a lot like Skynet. Well, it's artificial intelligence and a, a neural network, but, you know. Yeah. You don't put that a neural network in charge of um, primary function, but in terms of ancillary functions, I think I don't have yeah. a problem with that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But Can't this is really, really cool. cool technology. Go and have a look at it. Go and check it out from the links in the description. Really good to have a look at. Next one we've got on the list is um, something military related, which I know you're into, Lloyd. This is uh, Boeing's new MQ-25 Stingray. It's a refueler drone that might just give America the advantage it needs in the standoff with China. And we spoke about China earlier. This new drone has a long history from uh, its roots in a program aimed at developing unmanned combat aerial vehicles. But the Navy yeah. recently made a decision, instead of focusing on combat, to look at extending the fuel range of fighters. So the Navy realized that what they really needed was a way to extend the fuel range of the existing F-35C and the F-A-18 Super Hornets. Let's have a look at this new drone. Commanding takeoff in three, two, one, now. What we just saw was the MQ-25 take first flight. Uh, this yeah. has been an enormous accomplishment, but it is more than that. It is a partnership with the Navy. It was awesome. I mean, I think I was just saying, uh, I'm still shaking because this is incredible. You know, you think of, uh, this does not happen very often. And especially when I think of, uh, you know, there's so many different thoughts going through my head right now. Uh, everything from how incredible these two teams are to, to make this happen. Uh, and, and every motion from what we've accomplished to what this is going to do, even on a, a level of national security. Just in the capability. So I'll just fade the audio there and let's bring that back to the context of China. So they're talking about extending the range of their fighter capabilities. Um, yeah. But I was reading further into the article and certainly there was references to patrolling and pr protecting the um, China Sea. 
Um, do you know much about the history of that area? Have you heard about that one? Uh, not lately. I have. I know there's there's been the the argument over Taiwan for years, and that's in in that area. So yeah, in reference to that, and uh, I remember you know that there's there's still contention on whether uh, Taiwan is still part of is part of China or if. It, and there are allies, so naturally we're going to protect them, and that's why you know there's a long range area there that mm. they need to have. And refueling with one of those is probably a fantastic idea because one, you are not endangering because a refueler for for fighters or any other aircraft up there is a big tanker system with you got somebody laying there on the you know controlling the the boom arm you've got that personnel you've got the, mm. the boom operator you have the pilot the co-pilot the load masters and everything else and with this you're not endangering that's at least four or five lives that you're saving should it get shot down let me just share i'm just reading from this article if you find yourself wondering why a drone refueler could be so important to america's defense apparatus the answer really boils down to china the united states and china have found themselves in a staring match throughout much of the Pacific, particularly in a large waterway known as the South China Sea. A number of nations, many of whom have cooperative ties with the United States, have legal claims over large parts of this heavily trafficked waterway. But China has continued to use a large naval presence, including its Coast Guard and even maritime militia, to push yeah. smaller nations out of their own territorial waters. So that's what I think this links into that whole debate. Australia right, has been right. very strong on saying, you know, freedom of navigation in, in this yep. water is important, but uh, it, it, it begs the question of what's coming around the corner. Certainly the relationship with China has been challenging and I'm trying to be it's diplomatic. Really, yeah, diplomatic yeah. as you can, right? Yeah. Okay, well, we've got a couple more news stories. You know, I'm going to skip 109 and we're going to go straight to the 1.1 stories. We've got four little clips here. Let's just play the first one. These are four little short clips. So first of all, someone posing for a drone. <laughs> and in our second clip, this one is... Is that a drone? And there was a guy who just says, is that a drone? The audio we don't have on for some reason, but don't worry about that. It's all good. But he was asking, is that a drone? And he just was totally amazed at how quick that took off. So definitely a high speed quad. Another guy just having some fun with um, his drone. And the title of that one is Drone Go Wee Wee because of the <laughs> the sounds that it's making. Again, yep. the audio didn't come through. Don't know why, but it's all good. This oh. one, however, ow! the guy was filming the horse with the drone and all of a sudden he became the target. Let's play that one again just one more time. Oops. <laughs> oh, that had to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like the horse is going to come back for a second, second try. Yeah. Okay, we've got one more clip, which um, I'll do after what we're about to do, except for the fact that when I change that title and put Chris's name in there, I need to now put that back the way it was so that we can press this button and say, it's time for... Joking <laughs> off. <laughs> it's okay, yeah. Chris. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> so so oh, here's, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. You've got a joke each, um, one at a time. Who wants to go first? Let the guest go first. Let him oh. tell the joke and I'll see if I... I was going to say age before beauty, but, you know, that's just me. <laughs> oh, does that count? No. Does that count? No. Oh. <laughs> you did laugh at it, though. I did, yeah. <laughs> that didn't count. Okay, score okay. check. Chris one, Grumpy zero. Let's move on. Grumpy, you're next. Bite me, Greg. <laughs> What's the difference between a school teacher and a train? School teacher and a train. I don't know. The teacher says, spit your gum out, and the train says, chew, chew, chew. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, we've okay. got one all. Chris, your okay. turn. <laughs> I don't have to be good, uh, All right. Hmm. Let's see. I had a little list here, and oh, yeah. Uh, this, this here we go. This is appropriate for anybody who's seen a video uh, from one of my parking lot mm -hmm. episodes. Mm -hmm. What happens when you go to the bathroom in France? European. <laughs> European. Get it? European. Come on. Lloyd, dude. Help help a brother out. European. Oh. He's holding it in very okay. well, but my wife is he laughing is. in the background that is a, over that here. Is like a, uh, that is like a well-preserved fart he's holding it in so well. Nothing. Got nothing. <laughs> you, nearly, you nearly got him with that. You nearly got him with that. He's, okay. I, I think he's turned off his audio. Nope. So, no, 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 he's so still score, there. score check, two to one, Lloyd two, Chris one. Lloyd, what do you got? I just about didn't make that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Okay, what do you got? Okay, let's see. A mean crook going downstairs equals a cond a condescending condescending. Condescending, condescending. Got it. Got it. Okay, uh -huh. wasn't the best one. Yeah, yeah maybe not. not maybe not so much a joke as a. Um, it's just an attorney. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, humorous. Yeah. So that's kind okay. of two all at the moment. Um, All right. My my wife just um, gave me a phone here, and it's got some jokes in here. A Which China. one am I doing? Yeah. The top one. The Chinese. Chinese. I haven't read this. So I haven't proofread it. I, I'll give you that disclaimer. <laughs> See who laughs or doesn't laugh. A Chinese lady can't speak English. At the grocery store, she wanted to buy pork leg. She showed her legs. Next day, she needed chicken breast. She showed her breast. On the third day. She brought along her husband because she wanted sausage. What did she do? Oh, you dirty-minded person. Her husband can speak English. <laughs> oh, I'll give it to you, Greg. I'll give it to you. <laughs> that was cute. It was going somewhere. Yeah. I got to admit, yeah. I was, <laughs> like I said, I haven't proofread that one. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My wife said I'm not so good at the delivery. Well, I hadn't pre-read it. Well, yeah. I mean, you kind of have to know the setup, right? Yeah. Okay. Hey, you guys um, are into like uh, drones, SpaceX. You into the, the the space travel and kind of what, yeah. what we're doing with that. You've heard Elon. He wants he wants to put a base on the moon, right? Mm -hmm. I hadn't heard that, but oh yeah, yeah. He's he, well. That's before we colonize Mars. He's got to start at the moon, so he's he's going to set up this whole base. And the idea is, we're going to take off with some space tourism. And one of the things uh, that you have to have is obviously a hotel and a and a restaurant. And personally, I think all that sounds great. Uh, just no atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Touche. I give this one to you. Have won. You have won all the way across the board tonight. Which is I mean, good. it's not. It's not. It, oh yeah, it is a competition. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to quickly pause and just say I'm I'm having a look over here and Thunderbird. Oh, sorry, Agent K said he's watching on Twitch. Instead, yeah. So if you could, if you yeah. could tell me, is the Twitch one working better? And if so, Chris, okay. it's um, a route between the data center and the YouTube ingest server that's probably oh, flapping. Put this on me, huh? All right. <laughs> anyway, look, I've I've contacted tech support, and we'll we'll take it talk. It's just not right to blame we'll, the guest for your problems we'll, of a crappy no, we'll, show. We'll, we'll take that under under advisement, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, your Nick call is, is saying, important to us. <laughs> Yeah, Nick and Agent K, they're both saying Twitch is working better. So definitely a YouTube one. Interesting. Okay. There you go. We'll we'll leave that one there. We've got one more video that I want to play before we finish today. And this one, I think, is an explosive ending to today's show. 
And for this one, I can say it is the fireworks drone. Aha. And with great firepower comes great drone responsibility. Clearly. Well, they look responsible. And now you must be get paid to do this mm -hmm. and don't try this at home. This is dangerous. And when you use fireworks, use safety glasses. And me and Henke, we are just going to be stupid. Sounds good. And that sounds fair. But I think we are going to start with the rockets and then I'm going to test these big boys. So just as this plays, <laughs> And isn't that amazing? Here's the message for you. I've only got a short subsection of everything that they're doing. There's a lot more. Go to the description for our video and check out their channel. For those who um, may already be subscribers, this is the Hydraulic Press channel where they normally get things and squash them and watch what happens. Yeah. But on this occasion, they just decided to get a drone and... <laughs> Go hunting. <laughs> of course they did. <laughs> Only in America. That was <laughs> not an American accent. That's, that's not American. I hate, I, hate to, I beg to differ, but that was a Russian accent if I ever heard it. <laughs> I, I like okay. I like that guy. That's the guy that always goes Vata and <laughs> yeah. something else. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, yeah, not in America, yeah. but it, it was great. a lot of fun. I want to quickly challenge everyone with a thought. Um, what is right or wrong with doing what was done there? Grumps? Weaponizing. Yeah, it was weaponizing. Well, there's if it was in the United States, there's actually rules against using fireworks on a drone. Yeah. So not encouraging that from an entertainment perspective. It was interesting and entertaining. But do not try this at home. In the United States, not permitted. From Australia, um, it's not permitted to have any object drop from a drone. And you would say the um, projectile explosion material coming out of that would fit into that category as well. Um, so don't try this at home. If you want to go and try it, go and get government approval from your local regulator. Anyway. And that brings us to the end of the show today. Chris Gerbart, thank you for being with us. And again, I want to invite everyone who's watching, not on YouTube because it's not working, but on Twitch or anywhere else or on the replay, download a copy right. of Wirecast, go to wirecast.community, encourage you to um, evaluate it yourself, see what you think of it. Who knows? You might be a YouTuber waiting to be born onto the net as a... This could be you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Any of yeah. those people out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Chris, <laughs> let's put you up just Tickled. one more time. There we go. All Chris, right. thank you for being with us today. We'll have a talk afterwards about tech support sure. for the oh, route to the YouTube ingest servers. There we go. Thanks, Chris. I'm sure. Look, I know your <laughs> data center well. It. I know your data center well enough to know that um, it's somewhere else outside. It is a resilient, reliable service. And, well, uh, we'll, check, we'll check it out. We'll see if there's some way we can route around it or uh, or maybe work yeah. some magic behind the scenes. Absolutely. And Grumpy, last words from you. Well, uh, thanks for having me on as a, as a co-host. And I always have fun. You, I seem to be able to get on when we have the really fun guest. You know, that's what I like. So ah. John, John gets on when the other guests are on, you know, because they're more technical minded. But I like the guys that just like to have fun. So I appreciate it. Uh, being allowed to uh, join in on the fun. Okay. And the glitching. It, it was fun having you. I just remembered, speaking of glitching, I've got to put up a couple of quick community service announcements. If you want to send us a video to include on the show, send it to upload at gregkunit.com. If you would like to support us on other social media platforms, it's really easy. It's just at Drone at whichever platform it is. And we're currently on Twitter, Twitch, um, Periscope, Facebook, uh, D Live and a couple of others. And lastly, if you want to send us anything physical, send it to 5 slash 127 Princess Highway, Sylvania, New South Wales, triple two four. And that's all we've got time for. It's been good having you all here today. I'll see you next time. Bye bye for now. <laughs>